live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. I want to play this clip for you from the end of the game that we're going to talk about today. Take a listen to the crowd, and listen to the crowd noise. Now, I want to play this clip from the same game of the owner of the team coming out onto the field, waving to the fans, and celebrating the moment with them. It's a powerful visual, and you can see how happy he is, and how he's got his hands up in the air, celebrating what just happened on the field. When you hear a crowd noise like that after a game coming from the home set of fans, and when you see the owners celebrating like that, what did you expect just happened on the field? especially when it came to the playoffs. If you knew nothing about the situation, what would you say happened during this game? You'd probably say that the home team won, and probably won badly in an absolute rout, considering the fact that the owner was celebrating minutes before the game was actually over, and considering you can see some empty seats of fans who probably tried to beat the traffic with the game out of reach. And 99.9% .9 of the time, that's an incredibly reasonable assumption and position to take. They're celebrating and going crazy, so understandably, they're probably happy. And when you're at a football game and a bunch of people leave happy, it's usually because your team won the game, and in the case of a playoff game, advanced to the next round. But here's what makes this situation all the more bizarre. Despite the celebrations you saw, and despite the celebrations you heard, the Saints did not win this game. In fact, they got absolutely walloped. They got taken to the cleaners, and for all intents and purposes, did not show up, playing an absolutely terrible game of football. Which raises the question, why the cheers? Why the celebration? Well, this is the story behind one of the most bizarre moments in the history of the wildcard round, especially when it came to the fan experience. Before I talk about the reaction from the fans, and the reaction from everyone else to said reaction, we need some context to understand how the game in question was going. It's January 3rd, 1988. It's the wildcard round of the NFC playoffs, and we have an absolutely monumental game on our hands between the New Orleans Saints and the Minnesota Vikings down at the Louisiana Superdome. Now, for the purposes of our story, we don't really care how the Vikings got here. However, what we do care about is the play of the Saints, because they enter this game as one of the best teams in football. I don't think anyone had any expectations for the Saints entering the season. They entered the year with the fifth highest odds to win the Super Bowl, tied with the Buffalo Bills, who had won eight games in the last three seasons combined. And the season definitely got off to a bit of a shaky start, as you had the well-noted strike, which forced the league to resort to replacement players for three games, and which cancelled one week of the season, and you had the Saints sitting at 3-3 three three through their first six games. However, following a 24-22 loss to the San Francisco 49ers, something just clicked. Because from that moment on, the Saints never lost another game. They won nine straight games, scoring at least 20 points in every single game during that stretch, and scoring over 30 points in more than half of those games, which was not an easy feat to do back then and they wound up finishing the season with an incredible record of 12-3, which was the second-best record in the NFL. New Orleans finished the season with the second-best offense in football, averaging 28.1 points per game, which only trailed the San Francisco 49ers for the top total in football. They had the fifth-best defense in football, and the third-highest point differential in football, only trailing the 49ers and the Browns in that stat. On both sides of the ball, the Saints were just a dominant team that was the hottest team in the league. They led the league with 30 interceptions, coming out to two picks forced per game. They had a great front seven that finished the year with 47 sacks, averaging over three sacks per game, which would have ranked first if they played in the AFC. They had the best linebacker unit in football in the iconic Dome Patrol, featuring Ricky Jackson, Sam Mills, Vaughn Johnson, and Pat Swilling. And they were really strong offensively, thanks in part to the play of running back Ruben Mays, 
the reigning Offensive Rookie of the Year, who finished the season with the 5th most rushing yards in football and the 2nd most rushing yards in the NFC, only behind Charles White of the Los Angeles Rams. The bad news was that despite having the 2nd best record in football, they couldn't win the division, as the NFC West went to the San Francisco 49ers, who finished at 13-2. However, the good news was that not only were they in the playoffs, but they were hosting a playoff game, and got the opportunity to play the Minnesota Vikings in the wildcard round. The city had seen a ton of playoff games before, but that was because they hosted the Super Bowl. This was the first time that their Saints were the reason that January football was being played in the city. This was their moment. This was the biggest game in franchise history, as not only was this their first home playoff game ever, but this was their first playoff game ever, period. If you win this game, and advance to the next round to take on the Chicago Bears to keep this incredible season of yours alive, oh man, New Orleans is going to be partying like it's Mardi Gras. It's going to be like Mars because they will pump up the volume, and it's going to be kicking off the 1988 season in style. You win this game, and heaven will truly be a place on Earth, with that place being New Orleans. As for how the game turned out, oh man, oh man, it was bad. Despite the Saints being the heavy favorites to win, seeing as they were the second best team in football during the regular season, and were much better on paper than the 8-7 Vikings, who just squeaked into the playoffs, on the field, it was anything but that. Because this game was ugly with a capital U. Because after the Saints scored six plays into the game on a 10-yard touchdown pass from Bobby Bear to Eric Martin, to say that they got nothing going the rest of the way would be an understatement. When all was said and done, the Vikings won 44-10 in a game that felt like one of the most lopsided playoff games ever played. At the time, with the exception of the 1940 NFL Championship, where Chicago went on the road and famously defeated Washington by a final score of 73-0, this was tied for the biggest loss in playoff history at the time by a home team. In the history of the wildcard round, this was the biggest blowout ever at the time, although it's not as bad as the first round of the 1982 Super Bowl tournament between the Dallas Cowboys and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, if we want to count that, which the Cowboys won 38-0. Whether you want to count that game or not as a wildcard game, you get the point. Everything about this game was absolutely terrible, and where is the AFC wildcard game between the Houston Oilers and the Seattle Seahawks was a thrilling, albeit highly controversial overtime affair, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner, this NFC wildcard game was anything but that. Here are some stats just to show how much of a blowout this was, and this time, the stats absolutely do it justice. The Vikings had more than triple the first downs that the Saints did, with the Vikings winning that battle 28-9. The Saints turned the ball over six times, with both quarterbacks in the game throwing two interceptions. Bobby Bear, who was a pretty solid quarterback throughout 1987, went 9 for 19, completing just 47% of his passes for 84 yards, two interceptions, and a passer rating of 37.9, which is worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. When Dave Wilson took over under center after Bear got injured, he was even worse, going 2 for 12, completing just 16% of his passes for 20 yards, no touchdowns, two interceptions, and a passer rating of 0, 0.0, which is literally the lowest possible passer rating you can have. It does not get any worse than that. Half of the balls that Wilson threw that did not touch the ground wound up in the hands of the other team. In total, the Saints went 11 for 31 on passes, completing 35% of their throws. Not a single player on the team had more than two receptions. The Vikings had over 210 rushing yards on over 4 yards per carry. The Vikings dominated the time of possession, holding onto the ball for over 41 minutes. This means that if at any given moment, you were to look up at your TV and see who had the ball, there was a 69% chance that it was the Vikings. That is astonishingly high, especially for a playoff game. And it's not even like this game felt particularly close, and then the Vikings just pulled away. The Vikings led at 31-10 at the half, and scored 44 of the final 47 points of the contest. Even Vikings head coach Jerry Burns 
was stunned with his team's performance, saying, I look at the papers like everyone on Monday and see teams that win 44-10, and say, geez, how do they do that? Well, not only did the Vikings do that, but they made it look easy in the playoffs, as everything after the first minute and 23 seconds went Minnesota's way. And yet, despite the absolute blowout, and despite the incredibly disappointing end to the season, just the fact that the Saints even got here in the first place was nothing short of remarkable. Remember, this was a team with no expectations whatsoever. As Saints head coach Jim Morris said, although this was a bad experience and leaves somewhat of a bad taste in everyone's mouth, I think it's important to look at the big picture. This team won the second most games in the league, 12, and it's difficult to win 12. They won nine in a row, which is extremely difficult. They accomplished things nobody expected them to accomplish. I think that if you ask the players before the season, even they, deep down inside, they wouldn't have thought they could. And it wasn't just that. It was the fact that the Saints had never made the playoffs before. This was uncharted territory for them. This was the only team in the NFL that, entering the 1987 season, had no idea what it was like to play in the postseason. Since they entered the league in 1967, more than two decades before, they never even so much as had a winning record. Sure, they came close to the playoffs a few times. They had a winning in, losing go home game for the final wildcard spot in 1983 against the Los Angeles Rams. Led it 24 23 at the two minute warning, and then lost 26 24 on a game winning field goal with no time left. They finished tied for a playoff spot with a 4 5 record during the abbreviated strike short in 1982 season. And after an 0 3 start in 1979, they only finished one game back of the Los Angeles Rams for the NFC West title. And yet, in more than two decades, they had never made the playoffs or finished the season above 500. And here they were, sitting at 12 3 with the second best record in football, and with not just a playoff appearance finally under their belt, but a home playoff game to go along with it. Sure, they got blown out, but just the fact that they were here in the first place, considering their expectations at the start of the season, and considering everything that they went through, especially the fans that had been there since day one, was a dream. And so, with the game out of reach, and with the clock winding down, with the Saints down 44-10, John Madden and Pat Summerall praised the Saints fans for what they were about to do. Take a listen. And applauding in tribute to the kind of year the Saints have had the first time they've ever been in the playoff. They waited 21 years for a playoff game. They finally got it, and they haven't forgotten. I think that tribute is not only to the players and the coaches and Jim Moore and Jim Finks in the front office. And the players were super appreciative of this. After the game, Saints linebacker Vaughn Johnson had nothing but love and had nothing but praise for the fans, saying on the ovation that the team got despite the 34-point loss, and saying on the cheers that the team received when they left the field for the final time, the fans here are a class act. That ovation was appreciated. And there would definitely be times down the road where Saints fans would leave the Superdome after a playoff loss, feeling incredibly frustrated and feeling speechless. But not here. Not on this day. Not with everything that it took just to get to this point in the first place. And oddly enough, this is not the first time I've done a video on fans cheering their team after a loss. As if you want to learn more about the time in 1995 that this happened during a game between the Chicago Bears and the Jacksonville Jaguars, click the card in the upper right corner. Even despite the horrible result and the really bad performance on the field where the Saints, to the surprise of everyone, got outclassed in every sense of the word, the fans did their part to appreciate them and to thank them for what was a wild ride and for what was, without a doubt, the best season in franchise history at the time. When a team loses a playoff game, 99% of the time, it's booze that rain down or it's stunned silence that fills the stadium loudly. But not on this day. Because Saints fans realized on this day that three bad hours of football couldn't take away from four incredible months of memories. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com 
And be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaguarGator9. To see college football videos, subscribe to JaguarGator8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.